G'day, welcome back to the Your Wellness Nerd channel. My name is Grant, I'm a physiotherapist, and I want to dedicate today's video to an important public service announcement in regards to kids' shoes. So if you are a parent, or you know someone who is a parent of a child anywhere from the age of one, all the way up to 17, 18, 19 years of age, if you know someone that has an influence over the type of shoes that a child puts their foot into, please strongly consider what I'm about to go through in this video, because as a physiotherapist who's really passionate about trying to understand the root cause of a lot of the musculoskeletal dysfunction that I see, we can trace a lot of the dysfunction that we see as adults all the way back to the footwear that we've been in all the way through our adolescence. So what I want to go through in this video is I want to touch on a few features of modern kids' shoes that could be doing them absolutely no favors and potentially be setting them up for completely unnecessary dysfunction in their childhood, but also as they develop into adults. And if you are a parent, I think you'll agree with me when I say it's not easy trying to buy your child a pair of shoes. And I think for most people, the main things that we look for when we're buying a children's shoe is the cost of that shoe and how durable that shoe might be, or at least how often we might need to replace that shoe as our kids are growing or using the shoes and wearing them out. But if we can put those things aside for one second, above those things, there are some other features that I think we can't ignore if we really want to make sure that we do the best for our kids and our kids' feet as they grow and as they develop. And I think the number one feature of any shoe that our child should be wearing is that they should not have a heel on the back of that shoe. And the reason why this is just so important is that any heel at the back of the shoe is the exact amount of ankle range that your child doesn't get access to while they're in that shoe. For some reason, shoe manufacturers have deemed that even the slightest heel is necessary in our shoes, but even the slightest of heels is still ankle range that we're not allowing our kids to use the entire Higher time that they're in those shoes. Ankle joint restrictions, whether that be ankle joint stiffness or soft tissue or muscular restrictions around the ankle, have such an important fundamental role to play in so much lower limb dysfunction that I see day to day. Whether it's Achilles issues, plantar fasciitis, calf pain, shin splints, setting us up for a whole range of knee dysfunctions, even the raising of the heel changing the fundamental postures of our kids and how our lower backs and hips move, it's really important to understand the effect that something as simple as a heel at the back of a shoe can have on our feet and the rest of our body. And this might sound silly, but also probably not at the same time. Our feet have all the heel that they need. So any additional heel is robbing us of basic function that we deserve to have and can easily lose if we're not encouraging our tissues to move into that range. So if you are someone who has a child that's one or two or three years of age and they haven't been in shoes for that long, I would always recommend that you absolutely try and make the next pair of shoes that they wear as flat as possible. It's still not too late to gently start to encourage them to use their full ankle range again. If they can be barefoot, please allow them to be barefoot. But if they have to be in a shoe, a flat shoe without a heel at the back should absolutely be recommended for your child's feet. Having said that, if your child is seven, eight, nine, ten years of age or older, and they've consistently been in a heeled shoe for their entire life, it may not be as simple as just automatically dropping them down to a flat shoe and hoping for the best. They may have already accrued some mechanical dysfunction, some ankle stiffness, some calf stiffness or tightness that you might need to stretch out or release or free up to allow them to benefit the most from that lack of heel in their shoe going forwards. But ultimately, the ideal scenario for most children is they should be able to tolerate a barefoot shoe or a flat shoe for as long as they're wearing shoes. The second feature that I think is really important for anyone to, to look for in buying a kid's shoe is the toe box. This probably relates more to girls' shoes than boys' shoes because girls' shoes tend to be a little bit pointier than they could be. But at the very least, there's a lot of shoes that are quite narrow in that toe box. Now, the reason why this is really, really important is because we need to let our children's feet be feet. We need to let those toes splay if they want to splay, and we can't expect to cramp our kids' feet and our kids' toes into a toe box that's pointy or narrow, because that can stifle their foot development. We can't let that happen to our kids. It changes the amount of stability that we have in our feet. It changes the dynamics and the mechanics of the foot and how that functions, just because we're squeezing them into a shoe that's conforming them to something that they potentially shouldn't be conforming to. Another feature that I think we should really start to encourage with our children's footwear is shoes that are flexible. 
Now, this is really important for a number of reasons, but again, when we're wearing shoes, our shoes should be merely an extension of our feet. We shouldn't be forcing our feet into a really unnatural environment and expecting them to thrive. So with some shoes, some shoes are quite rigid and quite stiff, particularly school shoes. That isn't great for the development of our feet and allowing a kid's feet to become supple and strong and mobile at the same time. So any shoe that you find that doesn't have a decent amount of give in the sole or in the shoe itself, please try and find something that's a little bit more mobile and a little bit more flexible for your child's feet to adapt to and to live within. And another point that I get asked a lot in terms of adult shoes, and I think is now starting to creep into kids' shoes a little bit more, is this idea that our shoes need arch support. Now, there are absolutely people of all ages who have certain mechanical dysfunctions that might require some arch support or a shoe that helps support that arch of your foot. But as our kids are developing, kids' arches don't develop until about six years of age or thereabouts. So if we're putting them into an arch supportive shoe, we can't guarantee that the natural development of their feet is gonna be smooth and without hiccups because we're trying to force the foot to do something that it may not be ready for or that might slightly be different too. And it often sounds counterintuitive because arch support has become this really important part of our modern footwear. The reason why so many people need arch supportive shoes is to help buffer the dysfunction that they have before they even put their shoe on. So if you're someone who needs orthotics or an arch supportive shoe, that is compensating for something that you are missing. It's not that you somehow don't have it and you require an external device to give that to you. You should have that as a human being already. And often what we find, it's some of these characteristics of the modern shoe, whether it is a little bit of a heel or a stiffer shoe, or whether you're someone who wears thongs or flip-flops, that we start to create this legacy of stiffness and tightness and dysfunction that can permeate up and down the leg and ultimately create a body that collapses that arch as opposed to lifting up that arch. It's always a delicate question to say, well, do you need arch supportive shoes or not? Do your kids need arch supportive shoes or not? Or do they need some short-term support to support them, to allow them to feel better? while they're working on some of those hidden mechanical issues like ankle stiffness or hip tightness or hip weakness or something like that that might be filtering down and asking that arch to collapse. But if you have a child that's on the younger age spectrum, ideally you shouldn't be forcing them into a shoe that is providing them some arch support if they don't necessarily need it to begin with. So if we bring those original features back in again, it's completely understandable that at times it can be really hard to go out shoe shopping for our kids and to find a shoe that looks good and feels good, that doesn't have a thick heel, that doesn't have a really narrow toe box, that's not super rigid and is really flexible, that is also durable and is also cost effective. But it's something that I desperately need to get across to you is to make sure that we're not unnecessarily setting our kids up for some dysfunction as they get older. So what I also want to do is in the description I'll leave a link below to a number of different shoe companies that make kids barefoot shoes or kids shoes that are more akin to the types of things that I think we need to expose our kids feet to going forwards. I don't have an affiliation with any of these companies. I'm not sponsored by these companies. I would certainly love to work with these companies in the future, but I genuinely want to make sure that you have some options that you can consider beyond the on the shelf, run of the mill shoes that we tend to put our kids feet into that could genuinely be setting them up for a whole range of musculoskeletal dysfunctions down the track. We need to do a better job of appreciating the potential legacy that a lot of the features of modern shoes and kids' shoes are having on the function and the mechanics of our kids. So let me know in the comments down below how this resonates with you. Uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more information like this. Please consider leaving a super thanks donation. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.